Hey everyone, today I want to go through probably the most common squat problem that most people do that they don't even notice they are doing. Um, so many people do this and I don't think they are aware of it, so I wanted to make a video about it because this error just decreases efficiency of the squat so much and makes it makes the movement so much harder um, than it should be. So what it is, it is knee drift in the squat. And I will show you a video of myself and a bunch of other people soon of what it is. So what knee drift is, is you'll see when I get to the bottom of this squat, right at the bottom, you will see my knees drift abruptly forward. Okay, watch this. All right, I'll play that again. And into my knees, all right. Now let's do it in slow. So you see I come down, 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 so my knees my knees should be stopped. They should probably stop traveling forward about here. So when the top, the top starts sort of like one third of the movement or so, your knees are going to move forward to um, a particular point, but then they drift beyond that, which happens, watch here. See this abrupt collapse at the bottom? Look at the edge of my knee and look at the angle of my shin. Now, why that is a problem, there is multiple things happening here. One, when you go down and you shift into that, all of the weight is shifting forward. You're getting weight shifting to the toes. Okay, so you're going to lose sometimes. You can lose a bit of pressure on the, from the... Your balance in the squat should be in your midfoot. You don't want to go on your toes. Okay, so first off, it can shift weight into the midfoot. Oh, sorry, the toes. You'll see my hips actually come forward a bit as well. So if you look at the edge of my hamstring and my butt. So this is probably about where they should be. So from here, it should just go straight down. So my butt should not go forwards. So... It abruptly goes forward. It's hard to see. I'll show you on um, a client where it's a bit more clear. Or actually, it's even clearer because you can see. Look at the edge of my pants. When I get the knee drift, you can see how it moves. It moves quite forward. There's this. There's a large gap. So if I go here, you can almost see that the how between the weight plate and my pants here, but then when I get the knee drift forward, it's got a bigger gap. So, shift, weight shifts forward, hips move forward, barbell moves forward towards the toes as well, so it's gonna get out of your base of support, and then what happens usually when you come up is the hips shoot up fast, okay? And then in this position, I'm a bit too far forward and my knees are probably a little bit too straight for what they should be at this part of the movement so then here it's like I'm doing a bit of a good morning to complete the movement okay let's do it in fast in fast motion and then I'll show you some other examples of people and it might be a little bit more clear um, relative to mine so let's go back and I'm gonna press play and you see if you can see all those little things I picked on. Into my knees, falling forward, bit of a good morning. Um, not a not a very great rep. All right. Let me show you someone else, and you might get a clearer picture of it. Let's go with Cynthia. All 
All right, she comes down. She gets out of rut. See her knees keep drifting too much forward than they should be. Okay. They should probably go to about here. That's probably as far forward as they should go. But look, they'll keep drifting forward. She gets that same thing. So she collapses. The knees collapse forward. Okay, the, knee, the, the shin is too angled. You can see the shift into the toes because look at the weight. See the back of the shoe? Okay. See how it comes off the floor? Quite a lot here. So she's shifting away forward. Now, as I said, the hips shoot, the hips shoot back. The knees extend a little bit too early. Now in this position, look, she's almost like in a good morning position. And then to finish it, she's using a lot of her back to complete the movement. So I'll let this play and you can see, uh, see how she's tip, tipping forward. She's got that chest lag. The knee drift, hip shoot back, tipping forward. It's a little bit clear on Cynthia's ones. Uh, hips back. So that is what we're talking about with knee drift. And I'll show you the different variations of why that can happen. I'm going to show you what a good rep, what, what it looks like when you're not doing knee drift. I tried to do my best, my, my best squat from the side, nice and controlled. So this, you don't see my knees drift too much. They'll bend, they'll come forward where they need to be, but then they don't excessively go too much forward over my toes, and it doesn't look like I'm collapsing forward, right? And the bar stays quite straight, I don't get that good morning type squat happening, okay? My knees and hips all extend at the same time. So let's let's do it a little bit slower. So as I said, when you come down initially, so when you come about to, let's say here, about there where my knees are, that's around roughly as far forward as they should travel at that first point of the movement. Everyone's knees and how far they go forward at the start of the movement is going to differ between individuals. Some people are going to be more in line with the toes. Some people might be over the toes. It's going to differ depending on your body lengths and whatnot. Okay, but generally around here, that's about as far forward as the knees need to go. And then the rest of it, okay, should stay pretty in line with that spot there when you hit depth so i'm not collapsing forward i'm do i'm collapsing for like tiniest millimeter bit but it is pretty good okay and my bar stays pretty straight and then when i come up you can see my knees and my hips extend at the they they come up at the same time and I don't lose position in my chest. I don't get that forward chest lag like we saw in Cynthia's video and my um, first video. So let me put this in real time now. All right. Knees are back. Don't lose them forward. I stay far past. Stay pretty straight over my toe, my midfoot. You can see I'm not losing my balance. I remember Cynthia's, her back her back heel was coming off the floor and you can see her shifting into her toes. I'm staying pretty stable in the middle of my foot and it looks quite synchronized. And as I said, I don't get that chest lag. So this is basically what we are aiming for to do. All right. Um, versus those old videos I showed you. Now, I'm going to show you different ways that the knee drift can happen. First off, just not being aware of it, okay? I used to do it all the time until my coach pointed it out to me of don't let my knees drift forward so much. I'm like, ah, oh. and then once I was aware of it, I could focus on keeping my knees back. So just not being aware um, can cause you to knee drift. Two squatting very deep 
I usually find increases the likelihood of the knees drifting forward. So Cynthia is a good example of she squats super, super deep. She does bodybuilding. She probably should squat deep for better quadricep development. However, because she squats super deep, you can see at that bottom bit of the... Like, if she stopped her squat... About here, it probably won't be too bad. But when she goes really deep, look, when she goes past it... When I go forward, watch the knee. See how she collapses there? Okay. So, if you're going super, super deep... I find it is more, it happens, it's more likely to happen. Okay, so watch out for being super deep. I'm going to show you, you can see how she goes forward. Now, let's watch one of Cynthia, where she does a better job and doesn't let her knees drift too much. She's still squatting deep, but she is more aware of keeping the knees back. So watch this one. The knees don't drift too much forward. And remember her old video how she was, her hips were shooting back, her chest was falling forward. Okay, it was a little bit messy. Actually, let's do a let's do a side by side comparison, and you will see exactly what we mean. This one's pretty straight, not much knee drift. This one, you can see how her chest falls forward. I'll just let these play out. You might have to rewind this, watch this a few times. You can see the comparison. But you can see in this one, she's doing a pretty good job in keeping, the, not letting those knees drift excessively forward. She doesn't get the, the chest lag. She doesn't get a hip shooting back so much, okay? And her bar path is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's a much, it's much, much better than this one on the side. So, going too deep can be a problem. Um, squatting too fast. So, Laura, this is an old video of Laura, of a good example of her squatting way too fast. I say this is a real common one for everyone. I've even done this before. Squats too fast, okay. See how she collapses at the bottom there? She She's getting those same problems. That goes into the knees, hip shoot back, does a bit of good morning. She does a different thing, so this is another thing that can happen. That was a, that was a, a good example of a bad rep. Fast, into the knees, hip shoot back. And then what some people do, like Laura, they scoop so... That was a not too bad, but she did the scooping. Let's go back here. I think it's this rep. Okay. So what happens? Squats too fast. Sinks into the knees. The hips shoot back. Okay, she's in the good morning, but watch. Now, when she's going to come back up, she's going to scoop her hips forward. And her knees are going to go forward. Look. Look what her knees are doing. And look how she's scooping the weight up. To complete the movement. Alright. So this is a common error. That I see. Which happens in conjunction. With this forward knee drift. So drifting into the knees. Hip shoot back. But then they scoop everything. Under the bar. Okay, so it's a really, I guess, knee dominance to finish the movement here. And not too much of the, the hips. Alright. But let's see one where she does a better job, where she does it a little bit more controlled. Again, she is thinking of not, keep, not letting the knees drip. A bit more controlled. Look how much more straight that is. I'll keep it on this first row because this is the best one. 
All right, the bar path is pretty straight over her midfoot. Okay, not collapsing forward, and she's not doing the scoop. All right, look how much more nice this is. Straight down, straight up, not scooping. Okay, that one she fell forward a tiny bit. That one fell for those last few reps. She fell forward a little bit, but this first example, this first rep is a very good example. Keeping the knees back and how it makes it just makes her look like she's using she's using less energy to do the movement. Although this weight is actually a lot heavier than the other video, it's probably another like thirty or forty kilos more than that. This looks easier. Okay, it's much more efficient. She's not losing energy of the weight shifting forward, then everything going back, and then scooping everything up. And the last example I can I will show you of why knee drift can happen. Knee drift can happen if you sit your hips back too much. You've probably heard that you should sit your hips back in the squat, which is true. However, you don't want to excessively set the hips back like Amy does. Watch. So, when she starts, here, I'll put it in fast motion, but just to show you, look, she... See how she's breaking at the hips first? Before and before her knees even really bend, she sat her bit, her hips back really far. Now, what happens? She's, she's sitting her hips back in order to keep her knees back. Now, when you do this, if you sit the hips back excessively, it almost works like a pendulum and it brings you forwards. Now, watch her. Look how much she collapses. And now, she does the same thing. The, the knees shoot up early, the hips shoot back, and she's really far over doing a good morning type squat. Now let's do it in fast motion. Again, notice the hips getting pulled back too much and then how this shifts everything forward at the bottom. Hips back too far, in the knees. Hips shoot back, bit of a good morning squat. Hips back, in the knees. Hips shoot back. Okay. So when you, if you sit the hips too far back, it usually swings the other way and causes you to knee drift at the bottom. Now let's watch an example when she does a pretty good job. So in this, in this one, she does not sit the hips back excessively. She gets a tiny bit of knee drift, but it's not that bad. But this is much more improved than the other one. Look, it's more straight. The bar path, if you look at the path of the bar, it's pretty straight. It's We can say this is a lot better than the other one. Because her hips here, she's sitting her more straight down, which allows, which is not doing that pendulum action like I was explaining before. Okay? That looks a lot more easier and efficient relative to the one where she's drifting all over the place. Uh, not much drift. We want this one and this one. Let's see if I can get this at the same time. Where she is, she's taking a breath here, taking a breath here. All right, let's go. Uh, uh. Much easier. Where this. Oh, look how, see how inefficient it makes. Look how hard she's working here. Look how easy this one looks. This weight, this weight on the, on the right here is, it's about four kilos heavier. I think here she's doing a hundred and... What's that? 110, 20, 125 kilos, I think. I can't math. I need a calculator. I can't math for shit. 
25 plus 25 plus 20 plus 20 plus the bar plus the 5 plus the 5 plus the 2.5 plus the 2.5 plus the 2 125 I was right doing 125 there here I think it looks like something like I don't know, 122 or something like that um, but this one is much slower than this one Alright. Much better squat, much faster than this struggle here. Alright. Using so much energy to do the same thing. So, what are ways that we can fix knee drift? One, as I said, just being aware of it. Film yourself from the side and see if you can catch yourself doing that knee drift. I think I made it, well, hopefully made it pretty clear um, from these videos of how you can pick it up. You'll see it at the bottom. The knees just dump excessively forward. Just being aware of it can help you fix it. Um, two, control your squats more and don't go so fast. I know a lot of people... I'll make me bigger. A lot of people try to squat really deep, uh, sorry, really fast to take advantage of the stretch shortening cycle so they get that bounce out of the bottom of the squat um, so they can get be strong on the, on the up phase. However, as we saw with Laura's, if you go too fast, you're more likely for your knees to drift forward so that efficiency that you gain from using the stretch shortening cycle, uh, that efficiency can actually be lost because your technique breaks down. And as the problems that I showed you, I won't re go over them. So, yes, using the stretch shortening cycle is good and we want to utilize that in a squat. However, we don't want to squat so fast that it turns our squat to crap. So, you want to go. Fast enough that you can use the stretch shortening cycle, but still slow enough that you can keep your technique controlled. Okay, uh, so don't go fast. Um, as we saw, don't sit back excessively. Like we saw with Amy's, if you sit back excessively, that can cause a pendulum. So rather, you just want to think that you're sending your hips straight down whilst keeping your knees back. So just more think of keeping your knees back opposed to think pulling your hips back okay so just think hips down but knees back um, and also an accessory movement that you can do is pause squats work really really well here's an example of Amy doing a pause squat trying to work on keeping the knees back you can see when you're at the bottom you're forced to keep those knees back and look how nice these look Again, like we saw there's other, there's other ones that she was doing. She was sitting too far back. Everything was coming forward. She was tipping really far forward. Um, and it just looked really messy. But with the pause, it, it makes the bottom of the movement harder. It increases your awareness of how what your body is doing at the bottom position. Okay? And... You are, I guess, punished when you do something wrong because if she got knee drift at the bottom and if she lost her balance or everything went forward, she's going to really feel it and it's going to be super hard for her to get back up if she gets excessive knee drift. So doing poor squats can really highlight that bottom of the movement to give you extra focus um, and working on that area. Uh, and I also think from my experience of doing these myself and just using pause squats with lifters, I think doing pause squats and doing that isometric hold at the bottom is probably building strength at the bottom of the movements. Um, 
because one thing that happens to myself when I get fatigued and I'm just starting to wear out, my last reps start to go crappy and I get the knee drift. I literally just can't, I struggle keeping my knees back at the bottom of the squat when I'm super tired. So I feel like doing poor squats can build some specific strength at that bottom of the movement and that strength will hopefully hopefully translate into be able to being able to hold your knees back when you are experiencing fatigue. So I don't know how many people sat through this long video, but I hope the hopefully you got a lot out of this. Um, start filming your squats directly from the side and see if you have the same problem and hopefully you can fix it and this helped. Um, if you need help with your squat, if you want me to take a look at your squat, feel free to send me a video, send it to me on like Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger or wherever on the social medias that you might find me. Um, or even just come into my gym at Taran Point, um, SPC Performance Lab, just Google it and it should come up. Come into my gym and I'll take a look at your squat in person. It's probably even better. So hopefully that was helpful and that's it from me. See ya.